Um, so this is our, uh, this is December, December of 20 flipping 17. Unbelievable. Um, this is our last wealthy contractor training of the year. I, um, uh, for those of you that are first time uh, here, welcome. I, I, you know, my goal is for this to be super valuable for you. For those of you, I, I recognize that obviously some of our clients are on the list. Um, I haven't been able to go through all of the names that are on the list, uh, but uh, for those of you that have uh, uh, been here uh, with us, thank you. Let me know in 2018, because we're going to continue this in 2018. So with the Wealthy Contractor, um, I'm, I'm going to assume that all of you are on the Wealthy Contractor list. There's a podcast, the Wealthy Contractor podcast, and um, we've got uh, 25 or 26 episodes. They're purposely short. They're about 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Uh, there's a couple that might be a little bit longer, but um, those are continuing. We've got a bunch of good ones coming out over the next few weeks, and then I've got some great interviews uh, lined up over the next uh, few weeks. And uh, so you'll get the pot. You get the podcast. You get the um, you get these trainings every month. We do them every month. Um, I think I did them every month this year. Um, I may skip one month next year, but for the most part, you're going to get you're going to get these trainings. And all of this is really designed to bring you the best practices of what's working um, in, out there in the industry. Um, it, it, this is none of this stuff. I, I think. Anybody that has ever seen me speak or heard me speak or, or on the podcast, I'm not about, you know, reading a book and then all of a sudden without, you know, doing anything myself, having any like firsthand knowledge coming and telling you, oh, hey, you should do this and you should do that. Whatever, whatever you get from us has all been tested, proven, um, uh, implemented whether it's by us or by other other people we're bringing you what's what's really uh, what's really working um, I am going fair warning I am gonna pitch you twice in this uh, in this presentation today um, and I am happy also to stick around and take questions as um, as I usually do um, so I, I've, I've actually allotted some extra time today, although I'm not going to go over, um, but I've allotted extra time. So if anybody wants to ask any questions about any of any, anything that we covered today or anything uh, coming up, please, you know, feel free, uh, let me know. All right. So commercial message number one. There may be more than two, actually. There'll be two big ones, and there'll be a few little ones sprinkled out. But big commercial message number one, Accelerate Live, happening February 7th and 8th. If you have not seen the video, if you have not seen the website, go check it out, accelerateevent.com. Don't go right now. Go later. Uh, but go check it out. This is going to be a killer event. I've lined up. Not only have I lined up experts from the home improvement space to join me, but I'm also bringing in home improvement company owners. We've got a very cool thing called the $100 million roundtable, where I've got some very successful home improvement company owners who have been there, done that, made money, lost money, been successful, been unsuccessful, and uh, we're going to talk... Um, we're, we're going to have a very cool discussion. Um, the thing about Accelerate Live is that it's, we're taking topics and we're going to go deep into the topics. Instead of, instead of you know, that saying where it's, you know, yeah, inch high mile or inch deep mile wide, no. This is going to be inch wide mile deep 
on each of the topics that we cover. So we'll cover internet marketing, we'll cover sales, sales management, but we'll go deep on it, on each of those. We'll talk about reviews, we'll talk about referrals, we'll talk about all of that stuff. The idea is not, and you'll see this in the video, so I'm not going to give you the whole the whole thing, but um, this is really all about you getting those just those one or two breakthroughs that you'll need for 2018 to really make it your best year ever. And we're backing it up with not only will you get if if it if it wasn't what you had in mind if you didn't profit from the very first day then not only will we give you all of your your uh, uh, registration money back but we will also give you a thousand bucks as a penalty to cover your your time so basically you would get a free weekend at the B Ocean Hotel on the beach in Fort Lauderdale on us if we don't perform. So go check that out, accelerateevent.com. There's also a bonus day on Friday, February 9th, which is all gonna which is gonna be it's a small, much smaller group. Um, if you register for Accelerate, you'll learn about the bonus day. Um, but it's a much smaller group and it's really all about customer experience, delivering an amazing world-class customer experience. It's designing it um, from beginning to end. That's for each company that's going to be there. They're going to walk away with a design for their company's ultimate customer experience. All right. So that is my uh, crass commercial message number one. Um, let's get into now, we'll get into the four strategies. So here's what we are going to cover today. Now, uh, well, let, let me tell you, number one, profit, number two, price, number three, customer experience, CEX, number four is you, all right? These are the four areas that we're going to cover. In any, with any of these areas, I have done trainings throughout the year where we've gone deeper on each of these topics. What I'm doing here is I'm going to give you kind of highlights and kind of new stuff but with what you need to be thinking about for 2018 on each of these on each of these areas. All right. So let's let's jump right into it. Number one, your strategy number one for 2018 is being profit focused, profit focused. So too many companies too many companies are focused on their top line growth it's you know how many millions of dollars can we sell look i got nothing against selling millions and millions and millions of dollars the problem is this as good a year as 2017 was for sales the next question i ask everybody is i had this conversation with a company yesterday you know, how much did you make? How much did you make? And I'll tell you what, the numbers are anywhere near where they should be, where they should be. I'm going to give you a couple of, of, of examples of, of what we did with a client to kind of readjust the goals for 2018 to, to think about this. But what is, what is, what are you more focused on? Are you more focused on selling for the sake of selling or are you focused on making money? So to me, being in business is about making money. Now look, I made this mistake. I made this mistake. I didn't talk about it for a long time because it was painful as shit, right? It was painful because I grew, 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 put more money, put all of our money back in, grew, took on debt, grew, 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 grew. We got to $11 million, but guess what? We weren't making enough money. So what good was it? So I could say I built a company to $11 million. So what? We didn't make the kind of money that we should have been making. And it hurt us. And it hurt us bad. Right? So that's what I say to, to, to all of you. Now, many of you, I, I did a survey. I sent out a survey. Um, and um, asking about, for 2017, what was your profit numbers? Now, I think that I think it was a little skewed because the people that are profitable are going to be proud of the fact that they're profitable and they're going to, you know, they're going to um, uh, uh, participate in the survey. 
uh, I think a lot of people that aren't proud of where they were probably stayed away from the survey, right? But but now the numbers were pretty good. I mean, from 10% and over, I forget what the exact numbers are. I just sent out the email to last week, but it's like 40% of the people were over 10%, which is great. But the other, the majority of the people were 5 to 9%. And look, to me, to me, the new break even is 10%. And it's not just me. There's a guy that I uh, interviewed. I'm looking for I'm looking for his book. It's here somewhere in this. But it's a book by a guy named Greg Crabtree called Simple Numbers. And in that book, he makes a case for why 10% is the new break even. 10% of revenue, right? Now this is this is after all expenses including paying you, the owner, for the jobs that you are doing in the business. So if you're a salesperson, you got to get paid. If you're the general manager, you got to get paid. If you're the production manager, you got to get paid, right? This number is after that. This is a minimum, minimum number. Now, I like this uh, quote from Marcus Buckingham, what you focus on expands and results will follow focus. So are we focused on just growing our top line? or are we focused on growing the bottom line, right? And, and, and look, profit is the fuel for not only for your business, but for your life. Without enough profit, you can't effectively market. You won't have enough money to hire great people. And look, this labor market is tough. And I know, I know what's going on out there. I know how hard it is. We're looking for people, and it's tough, right? You got to have money in order to hire great people. The best people are working for somebody else. They're not going to jump ship and come over to you unless you can provide them with an environment that suits them better and give them the opportunity to make as much or more money than they were currently making. This business is about people. You know that better than anybody, right? You won't be able to give your family the rewards they deserve. And you won't have the solid foundation you need to make it the next 10 years. Look, the people that make it in this business are not just getting by every month. The people that are making it in this bit, hoping for you know some, some miracle to happen, they are, every month, they're banking money, they're banking money, they're building themselves a solid foundation, okay? They're building themselves a solid foundation. Now, let me tell you about um, uh, a client, I'm not going to tell you who it is, but such a nice, uh, nice guy that, uh, that owns the company and he works with his wife, all right? Look at these numbers. They're impressive. In 2015, they did $1.6 million. In 2016, they did $2.8 million. In 2017, they're going to finish with $4.2 million. Now, that's pretty impressive growth. But here's the problem with it. Number one, I asked them, how much are you making? How much did you make? Less than 5% less than 5%. Okay, so $200,000-ish. I said, how much do you have in the bank right now? Couldn't tell me, didn't have much. That money that was profit, he didn't know where it was, All right? Which means to me, which means that this profit is a, it's a fluid thing. It may or may not be. The other thing is his salary, 50 grand a year, 50 grand a year. And so I asked him, I said, okay, so what's your goal for 2018? He said his goal was $5 million. Wow, he's doing it. He's got to get it done, right? But I said to him, I said, but, and what about your profit number? Well, you know, it's going to be about the same. And like, but why? Why? 
what are you waiting for to happen? You know, as 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 entrepreneurs, you know, we're got, we're we're driven, driven, driven. Sell, sell, sell. I get it. I'm like that too, right? But we can't just sell for the sake of selling. You guys take way too much risk, way too much risk, right? This guy was an exterior contractor. It's a lot of risk: windows, roofing, siding, you know. And fifty thousand dollars. He's living poor. He's doing four million dollars a year. Four million dollars a year. Over four hundred jobs, right? Four hundred opportunities to wipe out his whole life, right? Four hundred liabilities, and he's making fifty grand a year in salary. And I said, you know, do you like living poor? You can't live on fifty thousand dollars a year. And 5% profit, if that is the number, you pay yourself some distributions, but, you know, okay, maybe you can get that number up to 100 grand, but still, you're living poor and your business has no money. So I said, why don't we look at something a little different? Because he reached out to me, by the way, this, uh, this was not a solicited, I didn't go to him and say, hey, give me all your numbers and then start beating them up. He came to me. He came to me and he asked me, he said, hey, this is where we're at, help me. Help me look at this in another way. I'm like, great, let's do that. So we asked, I asked him a bunch of questions. We went through all of it. And we figured out a few things about his business. Number one is they were offering a huge, they were offering a 20%, up to a 20% discount if you buy today, tonight. I said, 20%? That's crazy. Why would you offer 20%? And I, and I said to him, after we were talking a little bit, we came to the realization that every job that sold at a 20% discount, I think it was like 40% of them, at a 20% discount is losing him money. It's like, so why do it? Why take the job? And are your salespeople that bad that they need a 20% drop? You got a much you got you got a, 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 a training issue here. You got a value conversation you got to have with your salespeople, right? So we got rid of that. I said, take your twenty percent and make it a max ten percent. The other thing we looked at is we looked at pricing, which we're going to talk about in the, in our next strategy. But we upped his prices by five percent, and we changed his target. Instead of doing five million dollars next year. We already know he sold 400 jobs this year, you know. Why don't we instead target, let's do $4 million next year, but with a 10% net, 400,000 net, and pay yourself a salary that you can actually live on. So you're, you're, you're not living poor. So the salary is now gonna go to $100,000. This is the new goal, right? Now, it's less in, so a lot of people look at this and say, yeah, but it's, it's less money than next year. And some people don't like this conversation, by the way. I mean, some of you are probably uncomfortable with this conversation. But in this guy's case, in this guy's case, the problem was a lot of us are waiting for something to happen. We're waiting for, okay, when I get to $6 million, when I get to $10 million, then magically I'm going to make all of the money that I didn't make over the last three or four years. Now look, that worked for Amazon. That worked for Amazon. It doesn't work for us. Doesn't work for us. Because if you're not making money, in this case, if you're not making money at 1.6 million, you're not making money at 2.8. If you're not making money at 2.8, you're not making money at 4.2. And if you're not making money at 4.2, you're not making money at 5, 10, 50. It doesn't matter because the fundamentals aren't in place. You need to have the fundamentals in place. now. In his case, this year, instead of focusing on top line, let's focus on bottom line. Let's do 4 million, let's net 10%. Once we can demonstrate that, and you put $400,000 into the bank, right? And you know, take out the taxes and all that, you're still gonna have a quarter of a million dollars in the bank at the end of the year. Now looking into next year, now we can say, okay, how do we go next year? How do we go from four to five? Well, how do we add a million dollars? But take our net from 10% to 12, right? Much better conversation. 
much better conversation. And so this is this is what he's going to do. I'm going to follow up with him. I'm going to stay with them. I want to make sure that this is what he's going to do. And by the way, this is not the first time I've had this conversation. I have this conversation a lot. The reason I'm giving it to you is because it's fresh. Okay? But I have this conversation all the time. And this is something that I wish I had heard 15 years ago. Revenue for vanity, profit for sanity. And the underlying thing is cash is king. Cash is king. You need to have cash in your business. Right? So my whole thing here is don't settle for less than 10%. You deserve better. You work too hard. You give up too much to struggle, live poor, and hope that one day this is going to pay off. Look, with times the way that they are right now, and they say 2018 for remodeling is going to be bigger than this year. If you're not making money now, you're never going to make money. I'm sorry to be the one that tells you, but you're never going to make money. Okay? So figure it out now. And by the way, by the way, let's say we've got another two or three really good strong years. You put money in the bank, have money in the bank, have money in the bank, and do a couple of the other things that we're going to talk about here, and you set your business up to take you through whatever happens over the next 10 years. Look, the economy is not going to stay like this. We all know this. Let's not fool ourselves. Then this is not doom and gloom. You know, somebody somebody mentioned that to me, and I said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. This is not doom and gloom talk. This is opportunity talk. I made that mistake, right? I made that mistake, and I see people making that mistake all the time. I just don't want you to make the same mistake. Don't assume that, hey, you know, this is going to keep going and keep going and keep going, and you could just ride this out. No, you've got to be thinking now, how do I set myself up? for success in not only in 2018, but how do I set myself up for success in 19, in 20, in 21, 22, 23, if you want to be in business that long. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're, you know, if your deal is to cash out, that's a whole nother conversation. But for most of you, I think you're still going to be in business, right? So you got to be thinking about this. Number two, strategy number two, become the premium priced provider in your market, in your market. Now, I have a, I have a great client. I, I mean, we've, we've worked together since early 2010. I mean, they were one of our first clients. They're still with us, spend a fortune with us every year because they're all about the customer experience and their business has grown leaps and bounds and they're profitable as, I mean, it's just amazing. Family run business. One of the things that, that, um, the owner told me um, was when things got bad, when things started getting bad, when everybody else was lowering their prices, he increased their prices because he knew he knew they were going to sell less jobs. So he, he said, look, we got to charge more so that we can make the same or thereabouts or close. He knew this. Focused on profit, right? Focused on profit. He learned the hard way too, by the way. He wasn't born like that. He learned the hard way. He had a couple of years where, you know, he told me, he goes at the end of the year, they're working, 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 working. They get to the end of the year, they meet with the accountant. The accountant says, well, looks like you lost 100 grand this year. And he's like, you know, we lost money? After all this work, we lost money, right? He decided... We are going to become the premium priced provider in the market. Okay, this is one of the, one of the biggest challenges that I see. One of the biggest blockers of profit that I see from people that I'm talking with is price. Is price okay? the wrong price? Not charging enough. Okay, so. Like I said in the in the example that I gave you about the my client, you know, first of all, they had low price. Their prices were a little low to begin with. Number two, there was too much 
discounting to get jobs. The other thing that is out there, and I'm not an expert in this, but I have resources. By the way, everything that I'm giving you here, I have resources to help you with. So if you're having issues with any of this stuff, reach out to me, let me know, and I will point you to somebody that will help you with this. All right? So not understanding job cost, marketing costs, overhead. I'll send you to somebody. That's not my area of expertise. I will send you to somebody that will help you figure that out and figure out what the right pricing is for your company so that you can get the, the gross margin that you need to cover your overhead so you can get the net profit that you need. Okay, there's fear of losing jobs in here. Fear of losing jobs. Same client, I told you about that, raised his prices. You know, he said he's not afraid of losing any job. His thing is, this is our price. This is what we do for the price. By the way, they have 500 reviews that back up everything he says. That helps. They have thousands of customers that they have serviced that support them. So he could take this stance and say, look, I'm the more the most important thing is the customer and giving them what they expect and what they deserve. And in order for me to give them what they expect and what they deserve, I have to charge the right amount of money. And as a company, we have to make the right amount of money. And as the owners of the company, we deserve a fair profit at the end. It's a very healthy attitude. Right? A lot of business owners don't have that healthy of an attitude, by the way. Okay. The other thing that's going on is weak salespeople. Weak salespeople that are afraid of price or are rely on discounts to sell jobs or don't understand the value that they are providing, that your company is providing. There's overspending in areas. I mean, one of the things that uh, this other client was doing was overspending in marketing. You know, he's got all this money going to marketing, 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 marketing to sell more jobs that aren't as profitable as they should be. So it's like, okay, well, let's look at the marketing budget and see what is productive and what's not, and let's cut some of the unproductive stuff out and let's put it into the stuff that is productive, right? And not delivering enough value to the consumer. If you're not delivering enough value to the consumer, you can't be a premium priced provider, okay? So too many contractors sell jobs out of fear and price out of fear. They're priced at the wrong margins, they're high risk, jobs. They're afraid to lose their jobs. They're afraid, oh, I'm not going to keep my people busy, right? In most cases, in most cases, you're better off selling less jobs at higher prices. So for those of you, well, some of you have seen me, me uh, do this before, prove to you that you could sell less jobs and make more money. I'm not going to go too deep into it. I have a tool. Um, uh, called the price optimizer matrix. Uh, it's in my book, the W profits book. If any of you want this tool, just let me know. I'll be happy to send you, send it to you. But basically what this shows you is basically what this shows you is if I change my prices, given my current, you know, uh, gross margin structure and pricing uh, structure and what I'm selling, what would actually happen if I sold less jobs? What would actually happen if I sold less jobs? So, you know, so if we, we up the, just for example, just for as an example in this case, if our current sell price is $6,500 and we say, okay, we're going to up, we're going to add $500 to every job. We're going to up our, our uh, price by uh, whatever that is, 8%, 7.5%, 8%, okay, which is not a big price increase. You could sell you could sell 15% less jobs and still make more money. Now, the reality of it, here's the reality of it, is I haven't had one person ever come to me, and in my own experience, I've never had one person come back to me and say, Brian, we raised our prices, and boy, we stopped selling. It doesn't happen. Because the thing is, and here's why, I, here's why I'm recommending this, is because you have to become a different type of company. Right? You have to become a different type of company. So become a premium priced provider in the marketplace 
not only for the additional profit, but for what it will make you and your company to achieve it. Now think about this. In order to do something that you've not done before, you have to become something else, right? You have to do different things. You have to act a different way. You have to come to market in a different way, right? So to be the premium priced provider in the marketplace means you have to change your value proposition. You have to change your customer experience. You have to change the confidence that you are um, giving to your, the peace of mind and the confidence that you're giving to your customer, right? That makes you a better company. And by the way, when you make those changes, it's going to make you a stronger company, both financially, but also, but also in what we're going to talk about next, which is customer experience, but also in the realm of your customers marketing and selling for you drops your lead costs, increases your close rate, and increases your profitability by becoming the premium priced provider. And, and it sets you apart from everybody else. All right. By the way, this is from a recent study from Walker. 86% of consumers surveyed said they will pay more for a better customer experience. 86%. 86%, okay? Almost everybody said they will pay more for a better customer experience, right? So instead of sell at any price, charge the right price. So you can not only increase your profitability and get what you deserve, what you deserve, but more importantly, to deliver your customers the best possible people, the best salespeople, the best production people, the best installers, the best office people, everybody that they interact with. You have a killer crew of people because you're charging enough money to hire the best people, right? You can have the best process, right? You have a process, step-by-step, -step, a system, and that system has controls, right? the best customer experience, then you'll earn premium prices, profits, right? This is not that hard to do. It really is just a decision. It's a decision that you make. So what I say to people is go right now, go raise your prices by 5%, minimum 5%. Today, right now, go and raise your prices 5%. But then, but then look at now that we're getting an extra $400, an extra 500, whatever that number is, how can we take that money now and put it into people, process, experience, right? How do we use that money to become a better, stronger company? Okay. Number three. Now you'll notice, You'll notice, by the way, these are all, I, 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 it took me a while to kind of figure out the order. I knew, I kind of knew the four things I wanted to present to you, but I wanted to make sure I put them in an order that made sense to you. So number one is have a profit focus, have a profit mindset, profit, profit, profit. That is my goal for 2018 is profitability. Number two is how do I, how do I, um, get there. One of the ways to get there is to make the decision to become the premium price provider so that price is not an issue because that's where a lot of people are losing out on profitability is on is delivering the wrong price. Now the third thing here supports the first two is focus on your customer experience. Focus on the customer experience. Now look, if you want to achieve long-term staying power in this business. If you want to build wealth for you and your family and you don't want to be a slave to your business, right? You've got to commit to creating customers for life because the relationships that you have with your customers is what's going to drive your future success and wealth. Plain and simple, plain and simple. I'll never forget, I'll never forget it. 
in 2008, I, I had actually sold my company before the bottom fell out of the market in 2008, 2009. And I was working with a high-end landscape company. And because it was a high-end company, believe it or not, we were doing, we were actually kind of okay throughout the, you know, 08, 09, and 10. I was, I was there for part of 08 and, and 09 and part of 10. And I remember we were looking for people. We were looking for people. And this guy came in, this guy, this was in Southern California. I'll try and give you the quick version of the story. But this guy came in and this guy had a company that did uh, uh, masonry. This was a landscape company. We needed somebody to, uh, um, we wanted to take masonry in-house and do it ourselves. And so we were looking for somebody that can run these projects. So this guy can't, comes in, he, he answers our ad, we bring him in, we sit him down, and we start talking to this guy. Come to find out for the last three or four years, which we're talking, you know, 03, 04, 05, 06, when you know the, the 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 streets were you know there was money everywhere money was flowing houses were ATM machines people were spending like crazy I think a lot of you that were in business back then kind of remember those times but anyway this guy had a company and he was doing whatever he was I I don't even I don't remember the number but I know and by the way this was the time with the whole mortgage you know the mortgage thing where you could buy a million dollar house or at least where I lived you can buy a million dollar house for fifty thousand dollars down and no income verification and this guy lived in a, a, a million uh, two or a million three dollar house and his business was basically gone from one day to the next digging a little deeper here's the deal here's 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 what killed this guy First off, he wasn't a businessman. Wasn't a businessman. Got lucky. Got lucky. You know, all all what is that? The high tide lifts all boats. Something. That's what happened to him, right? But the thing that he did not do. The thing that he did not do, was he did not develop any kind of relationship with his customer. He did the job and he was gone. Did the job and he was gone. He was making money, living in a million dollar house. But guess what? He was coming to us looking for a fifty thousand dollar a year job. He was desperate desperate right now that's not unique to those times this shit happens every single day every day companies go out of business businesses small business let's not even say company small businesses go out of business every day for a lot of reasons but one of the main reasons is is if you cannot maintain a relationship with customers get them to come back and buy more and refer you to others Man, your 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 um, your business is on very shaky ground, very shaky ground, All right? Now, when it comes to customer experience, this has been something that's been talked about forever. People always talk about customer experience, customer experience. But guess what? It has never been as critical as it is today. Never. I'll tell you why. You guys probably can guess why. Because of this, right? There's this thing called reviews, online reviews. And if you don't have good reviews and you don't have enough reviews, you are losing out. You are losing out. We have a client that started with us, um, I think, late last year. We have a case study on our website if you want to go see it. Their online leads, when they, <laughs> they realized they were spending a ton of money on, on uh, pay-per-click, to make leads online, guess what people were doing? They would click on their ad, right? And then they would go do a search for the company. So they would respond, they might fill in the form, they might not until they go do some research. Well, guess what? This company barely had any reviews and the reviews that they did have were spotty. They implemented our feedback and review system their online leads went up 60%, 60%. The only thing that changed was now they had a steady stream of reviews coming in, right? This is critical, right? You've got to have reviews online. You've got to have them in the right places. And right now, these are the big three. By the way, by the way, 
just as a note, um, I think we've started telling our clients this, but um, we're not going to be asking people to review us on Yelp anymore because these guys, again, in their infinite wisdom, and if any of you are asking for Yelp reviews, stop, stop. Because, and you can go to Yelp's website and find out about this, but they are penalizing companies. They're penalizing companies that are asking people to review them. They want it to be organic. They want people to just go to Yelp and put in their review. They don't want you or somebody like me driving your customers and asking for reviews. All right. Now, Google hasn't done this. Facebook hasn't done this. Those two are still good. But Yelp, be careful. They already are horrible for us, but, you know, something to be aware of. Now, what we want to do when it comes to customers is we want to create raving fans. We don't want just satisfied customers anymore. We can't afford it. They're a liability. And I did, and I, I've done trainings on this before where I explain why they're a liability. But raving fans will give you more referrals. They will give you more repeat business. They will allow you to charge premium pricing. And as I just gave you the example, you will get more high quality leads at lower costs. All right. And raving fans are more likely to go and leave you reviews than not. Right. So who's going to go online and leave you a review? A raving fan or a satisfied customer? Quote unquote satisfied. A raving fan will. So your job is to create raving fans because also raving fans will come back. They'll buy more from you. Even if you're a roofing company and you only sell one product, by the way, the example that I gave you earlier of a client that I have, that's just their referrals and repeat businesses off the charts. They've been working with us for uh, coming on eight years now off the charts. They're a roofing company. They sell one product. That's it. One product. Okay, so if you're a multi-product company, this is even more important for you. Okay, so how do you create raving fans? Now, I have done um, I've done a couple trainings on this. Again, reach out to me, and I will point you to those where I go much deeper than I'm going today. Um, uh, again, I've got resources for all of this stuff for you. So just reach out to me, and uh, I'll be happy. Just let me know what you're looking for, and I will point you in the right direction. Um, but here's, here's something that I've been saying, and I actually went looking for, for, for evidence of it, and I found it. There's this, you know, company Walker, um, they did a survey, they did a study, and by 2020, customer experience will overtake price and product as the key brand differentiator. So what I've been saying is that, I've uh, been going around all year saying this, is that in home improvements, look, if you sell roofs, if you're a roofing company, for example, you sell the same product to 20 other guys in your market. You get it from the exact same place, from the exact same manufacturer, with the same brochures and the same information. Sorry. My throat's getting dry. Um, I'm getting a little too excited here. Um, but... Um, I've been saying that the the product is not enough to differentiate. You know, it's not like, you know, the example I give is we don't sell these. We don't sell iPhones. We can't rely on our product because there's 20 other people in our market that sell the exact same thing, right? What's the difference? What is going to differentiate you from the next guy? And this is it. It's customer experience. That's what's going to set you apart. And remember what I said earlier, 86% of consumers, it's from the same survey, 86% of consumers will spend more money, will pay more money for a better customer experience. So look, you know, with, with everything that I've, I, I've demonstrated to you here, by 2020, you better be, you better have a killer customer experience. Otherwise, you're in trouble. We all are. So the thing is, you got to start, like, now, if you're not focused on this yet, 2018 needs to be the year that you get focused on it. That you get focused on it. Okay? This is your key to higher close rates. Right? Why higher close rates? Well, if you're dealing with repeat business and referrals, we all know 
that a referral will close at anywhere from you know 40 to 60 percent of the time and a repeat customer is anywhere from 60 to 80 percent of the time so doesn't it make sense that the more of them that we have the more jobs we're going to close in less time it just makes more sense now those people that already know like us and trust us are going to give us a lot less price resistance too so we're going to be able to be a premium price provider this then lowers our lead costs it increases our profitability it gives us and these are uh, these are bigger conversations than we're going to have here but it gives you greater equity value and more wealth right ultimately more wealth because aren't you in aren't you in business to to grow your family's wealth you should be now look wealth takes all kinds of shapes and forms and again I can't go through the whole thing but you know wealth is not only about money wealth is also about time it's about relationships it's about purpose it's about what you do with your life right so use your business to you know for some people wealth means that they get to go on mission trips I have clients that go on mission trips they want to serve great well how do you do that the way that you do that is by making a profitable business well how do you make a profitable business well you know all these things that we're talking about that is what's going to fuel your idea your version I should say of wealth okay now when it comes to creating raving fans when it comes to creating raving fans you've got to look at your process from beginning to end from the first very first interaction with your uh, prospect all the way through to job completion and beyond what I say it's a, it is it's about designing and executing the exceptionally memorable experience and you can call it whatever you want all right but I call it being exceptional and being memorable now in a home improvement company or home service company there are four major touch points that really need to be examined, picked apart, designed, and executed on. And that is the initial interaction that generally it's done with a phone call. Generally it's done with how the phones are handled. That's number one. Number two is the in-home presentation, whether that's a sales presentation or the first time that your, your crews go out to the project, whatever that is, that's the other one. The third is the actual work getting done, the installation, and fourth is post project. These are the four main touch points that you have with the customer. And what you want to do is you want to look at each of these touch points. And you have to look at your business, right? You have to look at your business and you have to play prospect in your mind. You have to play customer in your mind. And you have to look at it step by step by step and you have to ask yourself a very simple question is at this point in the process what do I have to do to get my customer to go wow wow these guys are different wow you wouldn't believe that they did this right that's how you do it and you write it down you test it then you implement it into your company and you make sure that everybody understands how it works by the way, this is one of this is the bonus day um, that we're doing on the back of Accelerate on Friday the 9th is we are going to have it's going to be a small group and we are going to go we're going to take a full it's a full day workshop it actually starts the night before with a field trip but during the day what we're going to do is we're going to break down step by step by step in each uh, in each company the entire customer life cycle and we are going to design with the with the help of the group with the help of the group we are going to design some pretty amazing customer experiences and there's a format that I use where everybody will have a system that they are going to be able to take home with them and show to their people show to their staff and say okay here's how we do it here now and start implementing it right so that's on the bonus day of accelerate um, for those of you that are interested that was another commercial message but that's one of my favorite workshops to deliver I haven't done it in a while but it's actually one of my favorite workshops to deliver it's a lot of fun and you get a ton of value out of it 
Um, so customer experience drives more referrals, more word of mouth, more repeat business, premium pricing, more online reviews, and obviously more profitability, more longevity in the business. And it's really one of the most effective ways to recession proof your business. Uh, yeah, I can give you example of example after example of companies and people and entrepreneurs that I know that have proven this to be true. All right. Finally, strategy number four, really important for all of us, for for everybody that's that's on a. I, I'm going to guess that most everybody on is a is an entrepreneur, owns their own company. This is for you, but also, even if you're not, this is also for you, all right? But I'm going to speak, I'm going to speak directly to the business owners that are on here, but if you're not a business owner, just take what I'm saying and apply it to how you can use it in, in your life. Strategy number four is work on yourself. Now, this is probably the hardest one out of all four. <laughs> the other ones are easy. Um, the late, great Jim Rohn said, work harder on yourself than you do on your job or on your business. Work, working hard at your job will make you a living. Working hard on yourself will make you a fortune. By the way, for those of you that are not familiar with Jim Rohn, um, R-O-H-N is the last time. Go to YouTube. There's a whole bunch of stuff on Jim Rohn on YouTube. Uh, buy his books. He's dead now, but this guy was, he was something else. I mean, just amazing. Um, amazing guy. Um, there's hours and hours and hours of Jim Rohn on, um, on YouTube that you can watch. Um, but he, he was awesome. But he said, work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Um, working hard on yourself will make you a fortune. And he's right. Think about that. You know, if you're just working on, on, um, on um, a job in your business, like, for example, you know, um, a lot of a lot of home improvement company owners are actually out selling jobs. Well, there's a limit to how much you can sell and how much money you can make and how much time you can take off if you are doing the job of a salesperson. But if you work on how do I remove myself from that, how do I bring in other people, how do I create systems and processes, then I can grow a business that doesn't rely on me to go out and do this job every day. And then you can go from earning a good living to making a fortune. Um, it's up to you to decide, though, by the way. I'm not telling you how to live. It, this is all for you to decide what's important for you. But I know from my own personal experience, working on yourself is really, really tough. Um, but And it takes a whole, uh, it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of practice. But in the end, um, but in the end, it, it's, it's, it's worth it because you take control and you take charge of your life. So um, I grabbed these couple slides from um, a presentation I did a few months ago. A few months ago, called "The Seven Secrets to Becoming a Wealthy Contractor." Um, there is I also loaded that onto pod, onto um, the Wealthy Contractor podcast, and it's also available. The full presentation is available. Just let us know if you want to see it. But um, one of the things that I said in there is that most people are so busy reacting to what's happening to them that they're really unable to consciously, purposefully, and proactively create the life that they want. You know, so we get caught up and look, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I've mastered any of this. This is a, the thing that I work on still every day. I've worked on it for 30 years. All right. And I'll probably work on it until the day that I die. Okay, but there's things that we're battling. We're battling past programming, right? And so we have to become aware of the past program and we have to kind of reprogram ourselves. So there's all kinds of crap that could be going on inside of our heads. You know, like being, doing, or having fill in the blank is not possible for me. Having a $5 million company that nets 10% is not possible for me. Well, who we'll put that into your head, right? I don't deserve to have a $5 million company that nets 
I'm not good enough to have a ten million, a five million dollar company that nets ten percent. Only people that are rich, only people that are uh, that whose parents help them, only people who fill in the blank with whatever can have a five million dollar company that nets ten percent. Right? This is all programming. This is all stuff that is getting in the way of what you really want in life. And it's your job to work on it and to get past it. And the way that you have to work on this is you have to change what you think about, what you read, what you talk about. Right? Because we're magnets. We're magnets, all of us. And we're very powerful magnets at that. And remember the, the, what we, what I, that quote that I gave you before about what we focus on grows and results come from focus, right? So whatever you focus on, whatever you think about, whatever you read about, whatever you talk about, that's what you're going to attract into your life. And your magnet is always working. It does not take a break. So if you are thinking about doom and gloom, that's what's going to show up. Right? Because also what's going to happen is if you're thinking doom and gloom, you're going to end up reading about doom and gloom. You're going to end up talking about doom and gloom, and then you're going to end up attracting that into your life. You're going to find all of the evidence that you need in order to, um, to prove yourself right. So you have to recognize, hey, I got this going on, and I got to play, I got to fix it, I got to do something, I got whatever that something is. Whether it's exercise, it's meditation, it's taking time away, it's taking a break, whatever it is, you got to do it so that you don't let that programming ruin your life or not get you the things that you want in life. Right? And look, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll be the first one to tell you, some of us as entrepreneurs, we have big ambitions, we have big dreams. We have big goals. Some of us want houses and cars and planes and vacations and income property and this and that. There's nothing wrong with wanting what you want. Nothing at all. Don't listen to you know the the all the noise out there about about making you wrong for wanting to live a certain way, for wanting to have a certain type of lifestyle. Want what you want. There's nothing wrong with wanting what you want, right? Of course, you know, it goes without saying. You don't want it to be, you know, unethical, immoral, illegal, right? But you guys don't operate that way, right? Sorry, for those of you that can see my webcam, you see me itching my nose. My nose is itchy. I don't know why. I don't know what that subliminally, I don't know what that means. Anyway, so um, I, here's a big long list of stuff that I came up with, and I'm sorry to hit you with a big long list of stuff, but for 2018, you got to focus on you. Focus on you. So rest. I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but this has been. I can't believe the year is over. I'm. I'm actually tired. I'm. T I didn't take as much time off this year as I should have, but I'm a little beat, and I'm not necessarily physically but my mind is tired so I need a break I need to rest right um, eating good the fuel that we put in our body we need to schedule free time in 2018 I would one of the things that I would recommend and we're gonna do this by the way all this stuff is gonna get covered in accelerate we're actually gonna do an exercise that where we talk about free time but go into your calendar into a 2018 calendar now and at least for the first quarter and book some days off. Book some days off. Book a vacation in there somewhere. You need to take a couple weeks off every quarter, right? Just to recharge, just to energize, right? You'll be better for your business if you do that. So go in there and schedule it. Spend time away from the business. Spend time with your family, with your friends, with the people that you love. Always be learning. Always be learning. Read a lot. You can learn so much from what other people have experienced. Attend seminars. Learn from your peers. Join a mastermind group. Right? Work on your business, not in your business. 
Control your time. Control your mind. Big one is eliminate low payoff activities. As the owner of the company, stay focused on what are my high, what is the highest and best use of my time? What is the highest and best use of my time? Eliminate the low, the, the low stuff that somebody else can do and probably can do better than you so that you free up your time to work on what's important. Right? Create processes and systems in your business so that you automate systems in your business so that your business is running without you. Okay? There, there's processes and, and systems in place that run the company. And then finally, ask for help. You don't have to do it all alone. I had a conversation with my older daughter last night and uh, she made a, a, an important decision. And she told me, she said, Dad, I listened to you. I was like, damn, she actually listened to something I said? I was like, wow, what I say? And she said, you know, I am going to let people help me. I'm going to let people help me. They're going to help me. You know, this decision that she made um, has to do with um, her future and getting where she wants to go. And she, uh, she recognized, hey, I've got some weaknesses in these areas, and if I, do, if I go on this route, I'm going to be given the tools and the help that I need to combat my weaknesses so that I don't have to go and figure it all out on my own. Because I told her, one of my big things, one of my big things when I was young was I'm going to do it all on my own. I don't have rich parents, they didn't give me money, they didn't start a business for me, I'm going to go and I'm going to be able to say I did it all on my own. Well, you know what, looking back now as a 49 year old, looking back to that 23, 24, 25 year old kid, I would have told them, you know what, go and get help and don't stop asking for help, go find people that are better than you and ask them how to do something and shorten your learning curve. There's absolutely no reason why in this business that you should not be able to go and look at somebody else who's already been there and done that and learn from them. Copy what they're doing because you have the same business. Even though you might think yours is different, it's not. It's the same business. Learn from what they're doing. Okay? Don't reinvent the wheel. Don't be the, the, the you know, the, the, what do you call it, what am I trying to say, the, the, the lone soldier that's out there, oh, I got to do it all on my own, I got to do it all, no, you don't have to, you don't have to, unless you really want to and you want to do it the long, hard, painful way, but man, if you want to make it easier and more fun, get other people involved, and guess what, they will love to help you, they would love to help you, right? So um, there you go. Those are my four strategies for you for 2018. Now, my second big crass commercial plug is for Accelerate. A lot of the stuff is going to be covered at Accelerate. We're going to go deep. And we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, we're at a killer hotel on the beach. You have not only do you have a money back guarantee, but you got a better than money back guarantee if we don't perform. I got a, 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 a crew of people that are awesome. We've got awesome sponsors. Um, this is going to be an event that, that uh, is going to be talked about. You're not going to want to miss. So uh, go to accelerateevent.com. Check it out. If you have any questions, call me. I'm happy to help. Um, I'm looking in the question box, and I don't see any questions. So, which means that uh, I am going to to like go pretty soon. Um, I am going to put up here um, if those of you that are still with me, um, I'd like to offer you a no obligation strategy session. We're here at the end of the year, and um, we do we do a few things on these strategy sessions. One is we use a tool called the Opportunity Map and we look um, at your business. We ask you some questions. We look at eight key areas of your business. 
and ask you some questions um, about your business and um, and fill in this opportunity map and it paints a picture and then what we'll do is we'll take the information from there and we'll put together a custom uh, growth plan for you and we'll come back, we'll do this in two meetings and we'll come back and we will um, um, present you with this growth plan and um, you can take that information and do uh, and do what you want with it. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the, I'm, I'm tripping up a little bit because I'm looking, there's a couple of questions coming through the question box um, and I want to make sure that I answer those before, um, before we wrap up. But, um, but the strategy session is absolutely no obligation. There's nothing to buy. Um, but you'll meet with one of our uh, team. And this would also be a great place to ask if, if there's something that is uh, missing in your business or that you need help with or that we can, um, that we can point you to a resource for, um, that would also be where we can, we can do that. Um, is is in the strategy session, um, whether it's lead generation, sales, uh, sales management, customer experience, reviews, referrals, um, pricing, uh, profitability. Uh, we have um, we have resources that we can uh, introduce you to. So um, just a few more minutes. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> just a few more seconds. Just uh, if you, if you wouldn't mind. Just answer the questions on the poll, please, and so I can close that out. Um, I'm waiting for a few of you to uh, just hit something there. It's either yes, uh, please book a strategy session. I'm not sure. Call me. Maybe send me more information or no, not at this time. You're not going to hurt my feelings if you say no. Um, you have no obligation if you say yes. So uh, just a few more seconds here. Let me know. 10, 9, a few of you still have not voted uh, or, or answered the question. I don't know what it's technically called when you do a poll. Um, all right, awesome. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to close that poll out. Um, all right, Mike is asking, should I utilize Yelp? Well, oh, hold on. It costs five seventy five a month, but I haven't gotten any leads. Uh, I have had it. Okay, that was my next question: was how long have you had it for? Seven months at five seventy five a month and no leads, Mike. That's no good. I would talk to the Yelp person and ask them why, what's going on. If you haven't had that conversation with them, I would do that before canceling. Um, apparently, now they'll deny this, but apparently Yelp favors advertisers over non-advertisers, but I, I don't, I don't know. Um, I think that just might be a, a rumor. I don't know if that's true because that, that would seem a little bit, um, that wouldn't seem very cool to me. Um, oh, you did already no good answers, then there's your answer. 575 a month, no leads, I'd probably cancel it. I'd probably cancel it. Um, one of the things, by the way, with Yelp, for those of you that have, uh, for those of you that have a showroom or an office that pe your customers come to, ask people to check in when they're there. Ask people to do a check-in when they're there. That's one thing that you can do with Yelp um, is just get a check-in. You know, um, you're welcome, Mike. Hopefully, hopefully I helped. Um, all right, so uh, we're at twelve, twelve, a little bit past the hour. Uh, most of you stuck, stuck here until the end. Um, thoughts about Angie's list? It's, it's another great place. You should have reviews there. Uh, a lot of people are uh, make leads from Angie's list. Angie's List has a magazine. I've got a couple of clients that use the magazine, um, that use the magazine and get good results from it. It's like anything else. The, the one thing, though, I will tell you this about Angie's List and about that magazine. I really like it a lot because think about who it's going to. It's going to people that are paid a membership 
to be a part of Angie's list. Um, it's not the people that are the free people. Um, it's the people that are actually paying to be on the platform. So I would I'd seriously look at the magazine. Just make sure I've done a couple of trainings on how to write effective advertisements. Just make sure that you're not placing an ad that's like everybody else's ad. Make sure that you stand out, that you're different, that you're using all of the um, the top um, uh, uh, direct marketing strategies. Sorry, I kind of little bit of a brain fart there but you're using all of the direct marketing strategies headline um, uh, call to action um, uh, reason for them to respond today with an offer you know all of those all of those things testimonials that sort of thing you want to write an effective advertisement so that's my my thing with um, Angie's list um, you also it's funny that you ask about um, reviews are uh, a better business bureau reviews now I um, I've got my own opinions about the better business bureau and the way that I've been treated by them in the past but one of my uh, one of the people that I respect most in this business the basement doctor Ron Greenbaum I just did an amazing podcast with him too by the way and he's my special guest. He's going to be on our $100 million roundtable at Accelerate. Um, he chimed in. He said, uh, better business uh, bureau reviews are still pertinent for home improvement. I agree. Totally agree. If you can get reviews, you want to get reviews in as many places as you can get them. So when somebody goes and types in your company's name and reviews, that whole page is filled up with stars. That whole page is filled up with with stars, right? So uh, yes, of course, all of that stuff is important. Thanks, Ron. Appreciate always appreciate your input. How do you respond to complaints? Well, don't be nasty online. Get to the people right away and see what you got to do to to make it right with them. I mean, that's that's all you can do. You want to be really careful what you write online right you don't want to go in there and say oh this this person's a liar uh, we never did that or blah 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 you just want to write something like I would just say something like depends on the situation but I would just say I'm sorry to hear about this I'm calling you right now something like that I'm calling you right now to make it right or something I don't know whatever you know come up with something like that something positive rather than putting something negative you don't want to get into a, a pissing competition on any of these review platforms, none of them. <laughs> oh, Kelly. Kelly is asking a great question. I wish I had the answer to it, but I'll tell you what my experience has been. How many times can you ask the same client for a review until you've exhausted that one? Let me tell you. So, First off, the first thing to think about here is that a thrilled, a thrilled uh, customer is more likely to write a review than a satisfied customer. Okay, a thrilled customer, a raving fan, is more likely to write a review than a satisfied customer. To that end, I'm not sure how you, how many times you ask for reviews and on what platform you're asking for reviews, but here's how we do it and how we recommend our clients do it. So number one, we send out an email that asks for the review. We follow up a few days later with another email and then a third email. Uh, so we do three email requests. I recommend that our clients also call and ask our uh, ask their client how they did. You know, how did we do? Do what you call a happy call. How did we do? And then walk them through the process of writing a review online. Now, one of the things that we do with our system, our authentic feedback system, is we have the ability to text. So what I say to people is when you're making that happy call and you got that person on the line, say, hey, would you do me a favor 
and would you go and and uh, and uh, put a review online for us it would really help us a lot and it would help other people that are looking for a good contractor online to make a decision and then what you could do is you could either just email them out the request or you could text it to them um, if you want to see how this works just reach out to me and I'll, I'll show you how it works but as far as asking for reviews you know where we run into here's where we run into problems and I know I'm giving you a long answer but it kind of needs a long answer because there's different uh, scenarios but like if you are doing if you're sending out a uh, some sort of survey yourself from your company that's going to suppress your review response if you're asking for uh, a third party company to call and survey your company or your customers that is going to suppress your online reviews if you're only going for the online review, I would say you ask them a few times, three or four times, maybe at the beginning, and then that's it. You let it go. You let it go. But you got to set it up from the beginning. You got to talk about reviews, just like you got to talk about referrals. You got to talk about reviews ahead of time. And then you got to perform. You got to make it so that these people are excited to give you a review and to give you referrals. It's, it's the same process. The reviews and referrals is really kind of the same process. They're both just as hard to get, right? But it's really all about delivering so much value, thrilling them so much, giving them so many wow and ma what, what Disney calls magic moments that they just want to go out online. They just want to help um, and, they, and they want to give you reviews that's the best advice that I can give you if you have to chase somebody that means that they weren't that thrilled so you got to look at your 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 process you got to look at your system for how did we do how did we treat that uh, that customer did we give them an experience that's worthy of a referral and a review that's my best answer for you you're welcome Kelly all right I don't see any other. Um, I don't see any other um, questions. Um, I will uh, once again um, show you the website for Accelerate, AccelerateEvent.com. I'd love to see you there. We've already got a bunch of people registered. I know a lot of people were contending with the holidays and all that, but we've got a killer room block there. We're right on the beach, like I said. Um, super discount at the hotel. It's it's just going to be an awesome event. We're going to have on Wednesday night. We're going to have a beach, a beach, beach bash party is what we're calling it. Kind of a reception out at the pool, which also is right in front of the beach. Um, that is where you know a lot of relationships are made, where you meet people that are in similar businesses as yours, and um, you learn from each other. Um, that's a really powerful benefit to going to to these events. Um, by the way, I'll tell those of you that are still on. Um, Rick Rosso is doing an event next week, actually, in Orlando um, at the Ritz Carlton at the, in Orlando, and I've got a few tickets. I'm going to be speaking there, and I've got a a few tickets I think um, left. So if anybody's interested in, uh, in uh, meeting me at the Rick Rosso thing or just going to the Rick Rosso uh, owner's camp, um, it's a really good event. I, I like Rick a lot. Um, we've sponsored his event, um, I don't know, three, four, five, six times in the past. Uh, good guy, good information. Uh, so you can reach out to me if you want tickets for that as well. So... Um, so that's it. No more questions. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. There's still a lot of you here. I mean, I like I said, I got, I left, uh, I left time in my uh, my schedule to hang out here. I can hang out another seven or eight minutes. Uh, you're welcome, Jim. My pleasure. Um, if you've got any other questions, no. All right. 
Well, then I'm out, everybody. Thank you. Uh, yes, Ruben, this will be um, available online. We will send you a link uh, probably tomorrow, I think. Uh, tomorrow or Friday, the latest, we'll send you the the replay link, and I might even I might even put this up on the podcast as well. Um, it would have to be obviously edited, uh, so it'll take some time before it gets out onto the podcast. But it will be uh, but it will be available. Um, thanks, Ron. I appreciate it. Um, oh, podcast, where is it, Ruben? It's at iTunes. It's called The Wealthy Contractor. Um, go check it out. Go subscribe. Um, Ron Greenbaum is, I think, the latest, um, the latest uh, uh, podcast that we put up, and it is. I'll tell you, man, that guy is. Uh, he's one smart cookie, and uh, the wealthy contractor. I'm going to show you guys exactly for those of you that don't know. It's here. Check this. Check that out. Right there, episode 28 is uh, our episode with Ron Greenbaum. You can also, by the way, you can also go to our our new uh, G4 website. And go to the blog right here, and you will also see the um, the podcasts are here as well. You can either um, link to the podcast, listen on iTunes, Stitcher, or you could just listen to it uh, right here. All right. So hope that helps. We'll definitely check it out. Awesome. Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of good stuff there. Ruben, I think you're gonna. I think you're gonna love it. Um, all right, everybody. So awesome. So finish 2017 strong. Focus on profit, please. You deserve. You deserve to be super profitable in 2018. Um, so uh, don't settle for less. Make it happen. Be profitable. Um, focus on customer experience. That's going to be critical for your future success. And, and, and by all means, please focus on yourself. Take care of yourself. Um, that is what's going to really um, take your, your business and your life to the next level. I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for all of your support in 2017. As, uh, as always, I'm here. Let me know how I can help you in 2018. Uh, I am happy to uh, to do whatever it takes. I'm dedicated to your success. Thank you all. Have a great day.